moving to the NHS two years plus later. So I think I moved to the NHS January 2022, so 2023, 2024, and we are in 2024 mid-year. So I've been in the NHS for two years and about six months. What have I learned? What have I learned since moving to the NHS? The thing is, initially when I was going to move to the NHS, because I was in a care home, if you know my story, I started, came to the UK, started in a care home, worked there for a bit, moved to another care home, and then from there I transitioned to dialysis. From dialysis, I worked in dialysis for just over a year, and then I moved to ICU. I've been in ICU for over a year as well. So yeah, it's been a lot of move, and I know some of you do not appreciate people moving jobs. I am one person that do not settle for whatever I will not settle for. If I am not comfortable, I'm going to move. It doesn't take me, I don't know, no matter how difficult it is, if I have to move to Australia, if I have to move to London, if I have to move the whole world, I'm going to move just for my own mental health. <laughs> so yes, I've moved a few jobs and I'm not encouraging you to move jobs. But I'm just saying you're going to have self-actualization, you know, the self-fulfillment. When you keep pursuing what makes you happy and once you find it i know you found it i know you'll be like oh she said the same thing when she went to dialysis i thought i found the perfect job because i was a renal nurse at the time i was a renal nurse i had my specialty in dialysis i was a renal nurse and i loved it for as long as it lasted it got to a point where i felt i wasn't gaining anything i wasn't absorbing anything anymore i wasn't I'm like a sponge. I like to be watered. I like to be fed. I like to gain. I like to learn. I'm still very young. I'm just a baby. <laughs> so when I stop having my career actualization, my self-fulfillment, I knew I had to move. So I moved to ICU and let me tell you something. It has been wonderful. I think this has been the best move. I know you will be like, I always say this. This has been the best move of my entire 13, going to 14 years nursing career. I know, I'm not going to say everything is perfect. I'm not going to say everything is unky dory No, because it's not. There are days when you'll be like, uh. But when you look at the benefit and the risk ratio, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. Because moving to the NHS, I had this fear, which I'm sure so many people had, was about the pay. I was coming from a job. I think my first job, my salary then was about... 18 pounds per hour and then I left that job because it was a horrible job. I made a video at the time how that was a work, like I had co-workers from literally from hell. <laughs> Years ago I made that video and I went to a job that was then paying me 16 pounds per hour, which was fine. The manager was an African at the time. I was getting on well. You know, I've learned my lesson from the first job. I was transitioning well. I became the local champion. But then, I've shared this before. One of my colleagues looked at me was like, Gloria, you're actually wasting your talent here. You're actually wasting your... You're, you're wasting... You're just wasting away. And no hate or no disrespect to anybody who works in the care home. You guys are doing wonderful. But that was what he told me. And at the time, I felt, okay, I need to give it a try. I came to the UK having this mentality of, you know how we have to go back to do some specialty in Nigeria before you can work in any specialty. Because I was a dialysis nurse, I was a renal nurse, I knew I wanted to go back to dialysis, but I didn't know how to go about it. I thought I would have to just have to go back to school to, you know, specialize again, go to study, and then work my way up again. But I just discovered that, no, you just have to learn on the job. So I got the dialysis job, and that was why I actually literally had to move to the NHS, it was fine in the care home, it wasn't bad. But moving to the NHS, let me tell you something, it's not as bad. You know, I then moved at the time when I actually started in the NHS, my salary at the time was 13 pound per hour. Yes, you heard me right. One, three. And if you're back home, I know you'll be converting, you'll be like, it's a lot of money. But if you're in the UK, the reality is it is not enough. It is nothing. The first six months of my working in the NHS, I was placed on an emergency tax because I do not care, I do not know, I don't check my bank statement, I don't check my pay slip, I do not have a clue. I was complaining one day and my carer was like, Gloria, how much do you earn? So I told her, she's like, that cannot be right. You know, Scottish people like, that can't be right. Like, I earn over 500 more than you, that can't be right. So she said, please, can I see your pay slip? And then I showed her, she's like, Gloria, you're on an emergency task code. So I got that rectified, I got my money back. But so initially you can imagine how I felt, you know, 
that is the air i'm trying to bring up a story you can imagine how disappointing i felt in the first six months of working in the nhs where my money was so little and it was a new place new learning it was just after covid and nobody cares about you they're just trying to get the work done it's not like they don't care about you but nobody has time to babysit you nobody has time to spoon feed you with information so it was kind of a difficult time to start working which i started at the time but it got better because the fear was how can i go from any 16 pound per hour to then any 13 pound per hour and then being on an emergency tax unknown to me so i was any almost rubbish barely just just enough to pay my rent and just the basic bills you know so at the time it was hard and it was this i was pointing towards discouraging i'm like hey god i cannot go back because i moved my entire family from the town in fact from the whole council that we were we moved about an hour away or two hours away and we're not going back i wasn't gonna go back my children were settled in school so it was a bit disappointing i'm sure that is the fear that most people have is the fear of oh the money the money is too small the money is too small the money is too small but let me tell you it gets better i'm saying this because i have been in the nhs now and let me tell you if i compare my salary now even though i've just been in the nhs for just above two years it is actually way better than it was when I was in the care home, any 18 pounds per hour. Because at the end of the day, now I'm paying less tax. I've been lucky in Scotland. We've had few salary increments in the last years. Now I do night shift. Not like in the care home where it was just static. If you're night or day, it's the same money. Now I do night shift. I work some Sundays. I work some Saturdays. I get double for bank holidays. I mean, it might be double. It may not be double. I may be wrong. But yes, you get different pay for all this stuff. And then they add up. When I was in there, says because we just do outpatients and we don't do night shifts the highest we do is twilight maybe twice or three times a a month where you walk up to 12 o'clock when i was in dialysis i was earning about four to five hundred pounds less than i'm any right now in icu not because of the specialty but because of the work difference that i've told you like working saturdays working odd hours on social hours by the time you get those money some are double some are 1.5 or some are, i don't know how they work the money now is actually more than i was any when i was any 18 pound per hour okay so and then you keep going i've gone up my band and i know the next few years i'll go up my band again before i can then go to band six if i want to go to apply for band six it's just that i don't feel i'm competent enough to be a band six in the icu just now i'm not even in the mood i don't have that strength i don't want to do admin you can grow and when it comes to work-life balance i feel like the nhs has been more understanding for me personally i do whatever shift i'm giving because i'm lucky my husband works around me but i think sometimes if you say oh uh, can i switch this shift with somebody somebody will be happy to take your shift and switch for another day i've seen people who work just specific days i don't know how it works in your unit but in my unit that is what's applicable and when it comes to career advancement growth i think i've grown more oh my god i think i've grown more because in the care home i'm not saying you are not learning but there was a day i had a nurse that came to see a patient a, care, a, a resident in the care home at the time who was not well and she was taking blood and she came with all the vacutainers the purple the whatever colors and the blue i'm like oh i don't know what this does I, I i didn't have a clue and that was when i knew that oh my god girl you have to <laughs> so now i feel more confident in myself my nursing skill is improving i'm learning um actually in icu oh my i am learning i am learning fast the, the next three months i've told myself gloria if they tell you to do any training tell them you're not interested because i want to rest don't suffocate us <laughs> you're going to learn but one thing i've noticed as well is that you have to push you have to show the interest you have to show that you're interested in all this training they're not going to just come and baby feed you you have to be the one to say look i want to get on this training i want to get on this training and personally even if I, even if it has to be me going when i'm on annual leave when i'm off duty i'll go for trainings and it helps your confidence like because when people are talking you too you can talk so i think there is more career advancement career growth support at the end of the day it's not their father's money unlike it is a bit politicized i felt in the care homes that i've worked where somebody in fact there was a time i wanted to get on some trainings and somebody was telling me no no i am going for this training you will go for that training unlike in the nhs at least where i've worked i feel like they will give you the chance and generally speaking the backbiting the backstabbing is everywhere but i think it's less in the nhs because you're working with people with like mind i work in icu with consultants with doctors fy1 regs 
uh, you're working with nurses who have been in the, in the NHS or in IC for 20 years, for 15 years, you're working with new nurses, you're working with your HCA ones, that I feel like we're all, you know, we're all towards the goal of helping this patient to grow, helping this patient to recover and go back home. Unlike in the care home, where you have some, you have some care assistants or some carers that have been in that same job, the same unit for more than 30 years, 20 years. So they feel like it's their father that owns the whole place. They rule. Like my first care home, they were actually ruling me the nurse. Mm. I don't think I have that feeling right now in the NHS. I feel like I'm more in control of what I do. I don't like going to the world, don't get me wrong. And that's one of the bad, the downside I don't like in the NHS is the fact that actually working in ICU, I get moved about a lot twice a month, three times a month, move to the ward, move to A&E, move to surgical high dependencies, move to this, we get moved because we can go from 10 patients in the morning to three patients in the afternoon to no patient in the night and then you have like 10 nurses. In my unit alone, we are like 80 registered nurses. So you can imagine. So I get moved. That is the only thing I don't like about my current job. That is the only thing. Every other thing, I'm not saying it's perfect, but every other thing is satisfactory. That right now, I can't actually think of any other position or any other job I would have rather be in. I just like my job currently. So yeah, that is my update after two years and almost six months working in the NHS. And this is an encouragement for you. Go for it. And if you're still outside the country and you're afraid that, oh, I don't want to work in a care home, I don't, you start. Just start. Start. Get into the country first and walk your way up. Don't be too proud, okay? Who pride help? So that is my experience. And if you want me to come to tell you more videos or tell you any other thing that I've not mentioned in this video, please drop a comment in the comment section. Remember to interact, share my videos, watch my videos, follow, like, and I will see you in another video. And it is still your baby girl, your baby girl of life, Gloria Otsika. Oh, girl.